Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. Well, we made it to the end of week one of Cut Down the Keto Con. We survived! Yeah, and you'll find out how we did right, right after, after this. this. So if you're new to our channel, welcome. Like I said, my name is Joe. And I'm Rachel. And we're Two Crazy Ketos. And here on our channel, we do different things like product reviews. We do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics, kind of like what we're doing today. And then once a week, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is TwoCrazyKetos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. So it's the end of week one of Cut Down the Ketocon. One, one, one. <laughs> and we're doing this actually in collaboration with Autumn from Watch Autumn Keto. The coolest lady ever. Yeah, she is absolutely awesome. And she's given me some great ideas and we're going to check in with her in a little bit. But let's talk about our week. Yep. How did you do this week? I actually did really well. However, this is a trend for me. Do really well when it's just a one week challenge. Right. And then sort of like go off the rails and, and sneak eat and cheat if it's past a week. But I can't do that. Yeah, this is different for us because most of our challenges since we started our channel have been just like five day challenges, yeah. right? Like keto brick for a week, but it was keto brick for five days. Or an egg fast for five days. I mean, I can you know? do anything for that long. Right, because you see an end. But this is a 30, really a 31-day challenge. Yeah. And every week it gets a little bit harder. That's a bad combination. Now, if you're new to our challenge, you didn't see the first episode. I'll leak it over Rachel's head. But basically what our challenge is, is that we are trying to get ourselves ready for KetoCon. Trying to get ourselves in the best physical looking shape yeah that we just can get rid of any extra bloat that we have that kind of stuff because we're probably going to gorge at KetoCon. the bottom line right probably so especially because it's our first vacation in like years yeah i'm just excited <laughs> so what we're doing is every week we have to cut 100 calories off of our diet which i regret making it 100 we should have made it 50 like autumn she was Jeez. so much smarter than us and then to top it off, like we have to meticulously track all of our food. Oh, tracking and accountability. You know, I, I have, hate that. <laughs> I have cut out all aspartame because I'm a huge diet Coke junkie and I've replaced it with Zevia, but I'm drinking a lot less Zevia than I was Diet Coke. So yeah, that's a good thing. It is a good thing because you're thinking budget. I'm well, I'm thinking budget and honestly, like I'm enjoying the taste of it, but that that I'm savoring the taste partially because of budget and partially because I find it super sweet. This is a great flavor. We've never had this before. No, I just recently found that Blackberry flavor. Bubbly. I've only seen it once and so I bought it and they only had one case left of it. So when that's gone, it's gone. It's good. <laughs> But yeah, for me, um, I kind of took a play out of her playbook, which was to get rid of the gum. Right. Which I thought was brilliant. We hadn't thought about that. And But getting rid of the gun, gum this week, getting rid of the gum, getting rid of the gum this week has been really helpful for me because if I'm not constantly having a sweet taste in my mouth, then I'm not constantly thinking about the sweets we can't eat right well that you've added that on your yeah. actual challenge was you're gonna bike ride five miles every single and day and i've done it yes you have done it give me five for that because you, you even did it like on a church day where you get up at 3 a.m in the morning and don't get home till three o'clock in the afternoon and we're dealing with like little kids like 300 kids over the course of the day and you still you know, came home last Sunday, even though the challenge didn't start till Monday, mm -hmm. got on your bicycle. I was super proud of you. Thank and you. every day this week, even though we had busy days this week. Well, I have really been enjoying the bike riding and the versatility of it and the fact that you can just do it whenever you, you have a, a minute. So um, for me, my schedule is wonky, right? right. Like, you know, especially as we're getting ready for Caleb to graduate on Tuesday, we've had all of these like unexpected errands to run and all these things to do. And so I've just kind of fit 
these five mile bike rides, like sometimes I'm doing it at 4 a.m., sometimes I'm doing them at 8 p.m. But because it's a bike, I can do that. I just get on it and go. Right. I love that. So you want to check in with Autumn and yes. see what's going on with her? So we have we've actually have a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to ask her the questions and then let her answer them. Let's do this. Okay. Hey, Autumn. How did your week go? Are you feeling well? My week went amazing and I feel amazing. Like it just feels so good to get back strict to be challenging myself. I know a lot of people think that being strict is like a form of deprivation, but really being strict is a form of freedom. Just knowing that you're doing the best for your body, it really just makes you feel awesome. And so I feel awesome. That is such a great perspective, Autumn, that strict is a form of freedom. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna have to remember that. That is so good. And in the coming weeks, like I wanna have that attitude, like I'm not being deprived, I'm actually experiencing freedom. I'm gonna have to remember that when we get down and knock off like another 100, 200, 300 calories. Seriously, but like, I love that. So what is your energy level like? My energy is actually pretty great. I haven't really noticed a difference. I, you know, I have my Zip Fizz every day, of course, um, but even limiting my total carbs and things like that, I feel pretty normal. I did exercise all the days I planned to and those workouts felt great, so I'm feeling great. That is so good that you met all of your exercise goals for this week. That's fantastic. Yeah. Are you feeling deprived at all though? Honestly, no, because when you think of being deprived, I feel like you frame it from a mindset of all the things that you can't have. Whereas when you open it up and look at all the things that you can have and that you're choosing to have, that's really where that freedom and that sense of like, wellness and knowing that you're doing the best for yourself, that's when that takes over missing any temporary, you know, keto ice cream, quest bars, etc. You know, all that stuff will be there in the future. Like right now I'm working on a specific goal so I don't feel deprived. Well, that's a great way to look at it. I'm gonna have to remember that because I know that's something that I struggle with. I definitely struggle with like something that I can't have, whether it be a challenge in keto or just something in general in life. And I get so focused that I really want that and I can't have that. And I do, I lose focus off of everything that I do have in my life and all of the positives that are going on. And we forget that this is a challenge that we chose. Yeah. Like this is a goal we set. Maybe stupidly, but we still set it. <laughs> Well, I mean, in the, we're going to have success for it from it, and but it's this is a race we started. Right. So let me ask you, Autumn, have you seen any evidence of results from like the changes that you have made this week? I would say that sticking strict to my intermittent fasting and exercising consistently are already showing a lot of benefits. Uh, generally, I try to fast between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m., uh, but for the past couple months, it's just been like, oh, if I've been hungry at 9.30, I've just gone ahead and eat. Or if I didn't get till dinner until six o'clock, hmm, there it is. But like, I've really been diligently waiting to eat in the morning if I, you know, even if I was hungry, nope, don't eat till 11. And then making sure that I'm eating earlier. So I start eating around 4.30 just so I can be done at five o'clock. And really that's gotten easier <laughs> even the first week, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it was like, I wanna eat so bad. But by Thursday and Friday, I mean, it's just second nature now. Like you just have to be disciplined and you have to make the choice. Working out consistently, normally I would work out, oh, if I got a chance or if I had the time, I would do maybe 20 minutes here, 30 minutes there. But for this challenge, I am doing the specific weightlifting regimen for my website and I'm doing at least 45 minutes of cardio on the days where I'm not doing that. And like just doing that exercise has really made me feel better and definitely I just feel those changes happening already. Yeah, that's something that I feel like I need to work on personally, like just having a more consistent eating window because yeah. our schedules are so hectic and so weird. Like we have one day where our first meal is at three o'clock, then the next day our first meal is not till eight o'clock. And I think it kind of gets all messed up and I'd love to figure out a way that we could like get a more consistent eating window. I think meal prepping will help with that. Yeah, definitely honestly. doing some meal prepping would probably help if the, if the food is just ready. And for me, I wanna try to start having the attitude of like, oh, well, I'm not gonna eat after eight o'clock. And if at eight o'clock I haven't had a chance to eat, well, guess what, Joe, you're not eating today. <laughs> I have a feeling we'll make it happen <laughs> if we have a cutoff. So Autumn, how are you getting creative to both stay true to your cut, but also still enjoy your meals? That's a good question. Oh, I would say the most creative thing I've done this past week was that whipped cream that I had, like, 
Oh my gosh. I think you get creative with your fats and with your sweeteners maybe and other flavorings. So I'm looking forward to next week in this coming week in the challenge. I'm probably going to have whipped cream, but maybe I'll put some cocoa powder in there. Maybe I will put some extract of a sort in there you know just different flavorings that really don't mess with the macros but give you the feeling that you're having something awesome and delicious and still helping you reach your goals but that's of course according to sweets i really don't have a problem in terms of vegetables or proteins and meats and you know feeling deprived so it's really just sticking with those sweets it is that whipped cream as well as like really enjoying the jello and the zevia like really just focusing on like oh my gosh this is a delicious dessert you know when you can do that it's all mental oh my goodness yes i absolutely loved that whipped cream i don't know why we haven't thought about that before but like you know i don't need to put the cream necessarily in my coffee how about whip it up and let it do what whipped cream does best yeah i have thought about that the only reason i've never done it before because I don't trust myself with whipped cream and heavy whipping cream. Well, when you measure it out like that, it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, I should have done that the other day when I was like really short on the amount of fat I had. But Brilliant. That was a really good idea. I really like that. What are some triggers for you when it comes to going off plan and what are you doing to avoid those circumstances? The biggest trigger for me going off plan is the beginning of the day. I'm the type of person where if I'm gonna go off plan, it's going to be with sweets. And those sweets start at breakfast. So I'm going to get me some donuts, I'm going to get some cereal, things like that. If I start off the day off plan, it's just horrible the rest of the day. So generally, if I wake up and make it a point to stay on plan and my first meal be keto, I generally won't get to four o'clock in the day and be like, you know what? Let's just do it. Like, no, I've already made it to late enough in the day where I can make it the rest of the day, even if I'm having a temptation or, you know, something like that. But if it's like, if I do something bad in the morning, that just throws my whole day off. I'm kind of the same way. Like I have a certain time, like if I could make it to a certain point of the day, like I'm going to go the whole mile, right? Yeah. But for me, I get into that area, like if I get into the car, that's, if I'm going to go off plan, it's gonna be in the car. It's the snack zone. It's the snack zone for me because that is where I'm so used to like being in the car, drinking a soda, having something to eat. Like I can go all day long, but if I've got like, you know, a 50 mile drive, I want to snack while I drive. It's for me, like driving in the car is no different than watching a movie. Wow. But if I can get past that, I'm good for the day. Cause I can get to that like later in the day and be like, no, I've got this day. I'm going to finish it up strong. Yeah. I'm not really an emotional eater, which I'm grateful for. I mean, really the only, I don't eat to calm an emotion, I eat to cause an emotion, which is like happiness, you know? So like if I'm stressed out or if I'm upset, I don't really need to eat in order to, to make that go away because I do recognize food is not gonna make whatever is stressing you out go away. Um, I mean, it might make you feel happy, but that's only in the short term. So generally, I like to start off normal and then food can send me over the edge. I'm not, I'm not looking to eat to like dig myself out of a hole, you know? So I don't have that problem, thankfully. To avoid your triggers, the number one thing you gotta do is A, recognize them, but B, just make up your mind. Just say, you know what? Even if when I wake up first thing in the morning, I just wanna have a donut and I wanna go off plan because I want some delicious cereal, just no, you've made a decision to do a challenge and you have certain goals to meet, okay? Make that decision. I love that resolve that it's like, I'm doing this, just make up your mind and do it. Yeah. Like my food is not the boss of me, okay? Like my cravings are not the boss of me. And I kind of, I just love that. Like yeah. that resolve is awesome. Yeah, I need to take a like page from that book. Yes. <laughs> okay, Autumn, so this week you have to take five more carbs off of your total carbs per week. It's gonna drop you down to 15. What foods are you going to eliminate to get it down to 15? Because I know this week, I kind of like had an eye-opening experience in realizing 15 total carbs is hard to stay under if you want to have some vegetables and stuff. Seriously. Oh my gosh, that is such a sad question that I have to think about that. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I know it's really weird, but vegetables, that's going to be the next thing to go. So this past week I had broccoli and cauliflower. I think this week it has to be broccoli or cauliflower. And that just hurts my heart. <laughs> like That just hurts. But the, the only thing I'm really chucking like are carbs because my calories are only decreasing by a small amount. 
but like those carbs, those total carbs add up. Uh, and I think each of my vegetable portions was seven grams of total carbs. You know, like that is definitely where the majority of my carbs go. So I need to get rid of five total carbs this week and that, that's just a vegetable dish and that hurts. I love the fact that like you're using most of your carbs for vegetables. That's smart. We actually had a bad week with that because we've always been so good about including our vegetables in, but every day we were doing like four cups of lettuce and, and spinach and stuff. And we've eliminated that because of the 15 total carbs. But I think coming into this week, we're going to end up having to like eliminate some spices because we spent some carbs on spices yeah, this week. We got you know, some good we had flavor. our taco pie this week, but every slice of that taco pie was three total carbs because there was heavy whipping cream in it, there was cheese in it, and then there were like chili powder and cumin and stuff like that. So I think this week we're going to have to dial back the spices a little bit because I'd like to add a little bit of vegetables back in. Mm -hmm. I can do it. I can do anything. You can do anything, okay? We can do whatever we set our minds to. So I'm looking forward to the challenge and I'm looking forward to seeing the resulting success. Yes, I love that. We've got this. Yeah, we absolutely, we can do this together. High five. High five. And one for Autumn. Oh my God, guys, those were great questions. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to hear about how week one went for you guys. All right, Autumn, thanks so much for chatting with us and we'll check in with you next week. Yeah, bye. Bye. Okay, bye. Well, Autumn seems like she's doing really well with this she challenge so far. She is rocking it. Yeah, I'm excited to see how she's gonna do this week, dropping off those five carbs down to 15 total carbs. Cause this ain't easy. We struggled with the 15 total carbs this I had week. To, I had to lose my zip fizz two days. Yeah, two of the days, Rachel actually got rid of the zip fizz cause she's like, I really want something. I want some more flavor. I want a little bit of cheese. I'm like, well, we've got to cut something out. And so Autumn is not going to cut out those zip fizzes. I know that. It was rough. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you. So coming into this new week, we're not cutting out any carbs, mm -hmm. but we are dropping another hundred calories. How do you feel about dropping to 1450 sad. calories? Like straight up sad. Because I know a couple of days you did really well. So this past week we had like three days where we did OMAD. Yeah. And that was more not even planned. It was just like how the day evolved. The next thing you know, we were like, hey, we haven't eaten. It's nine o'clock at night. We need to eat. Yeah. So on those days, you seem pretty good with your meals. Yeah, because it was a giant meal. But then I think on like Wednesday and on Thursday or Wednesday and Friday, you were like, I really want to eat two meals because we had stuff going on in the afternoon. How did you do with those days when you had to cut it down and you you had two meals, but they were smaller? That was tough because I really had to take a look at those meals and see that, oh, this isn't much a, a portion. <laughs> like that, that was challenging. It really was. And the thought of them getting smaller is a little bit nail biting. Yeah, because I mean, this week we're dropping off to another hundred calories. So I'm dropping down to 2000 calories. You're dropping to 1450. <laughs> Are you focusing on this or what about like, in next week when it goes to 1350 and then 1250 in the last week i think you're ending up at 1150 calories i've got to just think of the day i'm in i right. think if i look far ahead i'll just start stressing out so are there any changes that you want to make this week so for me going into this week i want to like kind of learn a little bit from autumn and i'm going to do some meal prepping and meal planning i think that's a good idea this is a big week for us i mean we have caleb is graduating high school the baby and my mother and my sister are coming into town so i feel like if i don't do some meal prepping and meal planning like everything's going out the window because the only reason we really did really well this week without anything going out is we made that taco pie like on Tuesday, and then we were eating that like almost every day of the week because we made it one day, and then I was like, well, that was so easy to just have it in the refrigerator. We made it a second time. Yeah, and you know, we're not gonna be able to eat the same thing all week long. Right. I mean, that talk about like a terrible hostess, <laughs> right? And if you have guests that are coming that aren't keto, you know, we're gonna have to have other foods there. Yeah. And it's gonna be, presented at a time when we're already vulnerable. When Caleb graduates on Tuesday, we're going to be going out to eat. Yeah, we're that, going out for sushi. Yeah, we're going to go, I mean, we'll eat sashimi, right. you know, not sushi, because the sushi's got like rice and stuff. And so there on Tuesday, 
I'm going to exceed my calories, no doubt about that. And then Wednesday we will, you know, just get back on plan. But I'm not going to like miss the festivities, be, you know, that are 18 years in the making. It's been a long time coming. You know, exactly. So I'm going to enjoy that day. We're not going to eat things that aren't keto, but um, I want to be good the rest of the week. And I think the best way to ensure that is for us to have meals that are already prep so what are some things that you want to make for the meal prep well i've got some ideas but i do want to say i wouldn't worry about tuesday too much because we are we're going out for sushi and you're going to be eating sashimi well sashimi is not really high in calories you're just going to probably have like a lot of protein way more protein so just eat your protein maybe tack in a little bit of fat so it's not a hundred percent protein but right. chances are you're not going to exceed your calories unless you're planning on like eating the rice and all of the desserts no. and stuff like that. So no. I wouldn't worry. I don't think you're going to go off your calories. I really don't. So. Okay. I like that. Now, as far as the rest of the week, what my plan is I've already got the frosting, some chicken thighs that I'm going to just smoke up probably tomorrow afternoon. And that's more to have just have something in the house that, that if my sister like needs a snack or my mom or Caleb or Anthony, I'm just going to smoke up like 25 chicken thighs and have them sitting in there. And if, hey, if you're hungry, grab it and eat it. Like mm -hmm. we're going to stick to our one or two meals a day. Right. But, you know, the problem is when you're having guests, they may not want to eat on the same schedule as us. No. So I want to make sure there's some food from there. And then on Monday, um, I'm going to go get a brisket. I'm going to smoke a brisket. So that'll handle one day. I think everybody likes that. Tuesday, like you said, we're going out to eat. And then I'm probably going to do my meat layer lasagna on Wednesday. So I'll probably like make that Monday morning while we're waiting for the graduation festivities and stuff. Because the bottom line is that meat layer lasagna is always better the next day. I was going to say it tastes better the next day. You know, so and then I haven't gotten to Thursday and Friday yet, but it's the same thing. Like at least even if I'm not going to make it until that morning or the day before, mm -hmm. I'm planning out in my mind exactly what we're going to eat so that we don't go off a plan on this like celebration week. I love that. I think that's the best way that we can secure success in this week. Right. I'll probably make a breakfast casserole too to make sure that there's a breakfast for them every single day. We'll make the breakfast casserole and probably an egg loaf. I love it. Okay, so you asked me about like making any changes or anything like that. What about you? Are you going to make any changes? How about like upping the miles on the bike? Maybe 10, 15? You crazy. <laughs> you crazy boy. You got this. Well, the thing is, is that if I just continue doing it, I will be proud of myself. Like we're having house guests. Like how am I going to be like, hey guys, I'll see you in three hours. I've got like a more, you know, of an exercise routine this week. I mean... I just want to stay consistent and do it. I'm going to continue to stay off the gum. Right. That's been like a huge challenge for me to not have my gum. And I haven't been using any sweeteners. I haven't added like monk fruit to anything. I'm just drinking like water with lime in it. You know, once in a while we'll have a seltzer. But like I haven't added any sweeteners because I'm truly trying to keep the sweet tooth out of my mind. So I'm just going to continue trying to do that into week two. So what about you? Are you going to try to continue with no aspartame? You know that if you do, that means that you can't have a Diet Coke when we go out to eat. That is the one that I'm really worried about, but I am. I'm going to stay true to my word. And when we go out to eat, I'm not going to like drink a Diet Coke. And I don't usually like getting water in the restaurants because it's usually tap water. And the tap water down here in South Florida is horrible. You're going to bring some of that true lemon? Well, I'm definitely going to bring some of the true lemon or true lime to put in my water. And I don't know. I may just sneak a Zevia in your mom purse and didn't like Save pour it movies? into a glass. Well, why not? Oh, my gosh. He's planning to embarrass me. That's what you're doing. I'm thinking about it. I haven't I haven't made my final decision on that. But hey, I have dietary needs and they're just going to need to get on page. Unless they're willing to run out to the store and buy me a Zevia, I'll be fine to pay them like double or triple the amount. But like, hey, I can't have the Diet Coke. You straight up crazy. <laughs> no, but overall, like I'm proud of myself because I haven't been drinking the aspartame. And I think my biggest struggle with the aspartame is going to work. I've got my big, like, you know, 64 ounce mug and we stop every day at Wawa and we fill it up and Anthony fills his up and Kayla's been filling his up. And so what I've been doing, I've been giving them their money to go get the soda and I'm staying in the car. Like I'm not even going into Wawa. Just eliminate the whole area. I'm eliminating like just the seeing that machine because, and I've been bringing my big jug of water with me 
and I just ordered like a really nice cooler that's supposed to keep ice for like five days and I'm just gonna keep like iced water in the back of the car. I think it's a smart plan. So. Well, I think that kind of wraps up week number one. Week numero uno is Going in the into books. week two. I'm excited about this. I'm more excited because we only have three weeks left. I know. <laughs> so not so much that it's only three weeks left of the challenge, but that means in three weeks we get to go to KetoCon. We get to meet Autumn. We get to meet Autumn. We get to meet a bunch of different people. We, hopefully we get to meet a bunch of you guys. Yeah. And uh, we're going to come back with a lot of good footage and hopefully learning some new stuff about keto. I can't wait. So that is our video for today. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this and maybe learning a little something. Yeah. Let us know down below if you're following along in the challenge and like giving anything up or, you know, set a challenge for yourself for the next 30 days. Now, we're really enjoying doing this. We're enjoying this collaboration with Autumn. And if you haven't checked out Autumn's channel, Go make there. sure you do it. I'll leave a link over Rachel's head. Yes, because she is awesome. I just want to like live for a week with her mom and her sisters. They like, are hysterical. Her whole family's awesome. I mean, she put up that recipe video the other day, like making the mashed potatoes or the mashed cauliflower, and that her sister just like jumps in. That was like, awesome. they crack me up. They do. They're so funny. So. Again, that's our video for today. If you like what you saw, do us a favor. Hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. And until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.